All right, welcome back uh, to the 3D Printing Essentials. And I'm Chris Iverson, and I'm here with Emmett Lalish. Uh, we're going to talk now about 3D Builder and our application. This is Microsoft's application for getting started in 3D printing. And basically, I've got like one slide, which I'll show you right now. This is just a screenshot of 3D Builder. Uh, this is a, an app that is available in the Windows 8.1 App Store. Uh, and you can uh, download this today. We're, we're actually in the process of doing a major update to this. And so Emmett is going to take time here and go through the features and features and tell you what's new and what's so cool about this app and why we think this is your kind of your first app that you should try downloading and uh, what's so great about it. Yeah, so I mean basically this app is designed to be really simple. Um, so what we have here is basically just um, an, an object catalog first. We've got various um, categories here. You can, for instance, play with like a train set if you want um, and, and look at any, any one of these objects. You can build track um, and the various cars. But, you know, we've got all kinds of other just various little things. Uh, if we kind of scroll through here, uh, you can there's, see all there's kinds There's the Windows yeah. keychain logo that we just printed on the, in our previous episode. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have some primitive shapes here, like cones and cubes and hemispheres, in case uh, you want to um, put things together. Um, we've got, I mean, napkin rings and cookie cutters if you're looking for, you know, more practical items <laughs> and, and just, you know. So this is just things. a default set of things that we know print well that you can use to kind of calibrate your printer and do test prints, right? So if I was interested in finding other content, like where would I get other, other things that are out on, uh, you know, out, out on the internet or available elsewhere? That's exactly right. I mean, like for instance, you could go on to Thingiverse. Um, that's where I share all of my designs, for instance, which you have maybe seen arrayed around the table. And that stuff is is all up there along with, you know, 200,000 other designs. So there's, there's a lot there um, if you're interested. And there's plenty of other sites that um, have 3D content. So people upload their 3D models now out to the, to the internet on various communities. Uh, so there's actually a lot of content I can download. So does 3D Builder open any of that content? Yeah, exactly. So we load uh, standard STL and OBJ files. Um, these are sort of the most common of the formats that are um, out there on the internet for, uh, for 3D printing. Um, we also have our own format internally called uh, 3MF, uh, which is what 3D Builder saves things as, and we're kind of trying to, to bring that in to help with some of the deficiencies that exist in the current STL and OBJ formats, since they were sort of more designed around rendering than really building solid objects. Um, but if we come back to the, the 3D Builder screen here, um, one other thing that we, we went ahead and included were a whole bunch of uh, phone docks for various uh, Windows phones you can buy. So, you know, cool. maybe you have a Nokia 520 at home. Well, you can pick that object out, and, uh, and it's designed here with the specific dimensions of the, of the Nokia phone. And it's even got, um, now I just scaled it there by grabbing these, these handles. I don't actually want to do that, so I'd better undo. <laughs> um, and so that's the proper size for the actual phone. And there's a little hole in there where you can actually stuff the USB plug in and it'll sit in there, so then whenever you drop your phone into this, it'll it'll dock into oh, your. So it's computer. actually a docking station. You can make it functional. Right. That's exactly right. Um, and so this is made um, just right for the phone, but you know maybe you want to personalize this. So we've got um, a bunch of options down here. If we go into the edit menu, um, we have the option, for instance, to emboss. Um, something onto it. So maybe you'd want to emboss your name. So I think I'm going to do a text emboss. And over here in text, I can type, say, Emmett. And now it's going to emboss Emmett on here. So now, say, you want to maybe make it a little bigger so it's visible. Um, you know, we can, we can do that, no problem. Uh, we can position it easily. Um, there's even the ability, if, if you're interested, there's, a, there's different projection types. This gets into a little bit more sort of mathematical concept, but it's in a planar um, emboss right now. You can do it in a cylindrical fashion if you wanted to emboss all the way around oh, a cylinder. Oh, that's so cool. I love that UI. Yeah. You know, or you can even emboss on a sphere um, and actually make a spherical projection if you're interested. So there's all kinds of options you can play with. Um, we're just going to do something simple and planar here for the moment. Uh, the last thing you might want to take a look at is, is how much extrusion you have. Um, so basically, how, how deep is this embossed? And of course, we can zoom in here by, by uh, pinching on the screen. And this little, this little sort of green um, 
length basically says how much we're going to emboss. And we can either emboss positive, where it'll stick out of the object, or we can emboss negative, this little red line, and it's going to basically go cut into the object what, by that so what are those? What are those numbers? What, are they units of some sort? They're, they're just like a, a percent of the total size of the emboss that we're, that we're cutting into it. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go positive, and you know, it, I've actually found it takes very little embossing to show up very cleanly on a 3D print. Keep in mind, these are extremely accurate printers. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that, and right there, you see... Oh, that's so cool. That so it just actually manipulated the existing model in one touch like that, huh? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and in the background, this program is checking that the model is still a solid manifold or watertight however you want to call it um, and so that's actually you know it's a proper operation um, and so you know okay that that looks fine but maybe we'd want to add something else uh, you, we can also emboss contours um, so we have you can load any picture that you want it, it helps if it's kind of high contrast like a black and white kind of thing so I can load like a photo though too or like a black and white photo maybe Maybe. It's, I don't know if it would work as well on a photo. It's helpful to have a relatively simple design, okay. like, like so these ones more that like we've clip brought. Art of some sort. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so we, we've given you some kind of basics here. Um, and so, you know, maybe I want to emboss a smiley face onto this thing. Well, all right, there we go. Maybe I'll just uh, position it down a little bit in Z. Um, and uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll emboss that one um, inwards a little bit. And then you can apply that, and boom, you can see that we've cut a smiley face down into the model. That's cool. And so now, you know, if you want to print this, well, it's as easy as, you know, you can swipe up and grab this print button, and that'll bring up uh, your standard printer. And of course, right now, I'm on a computer that isn't actually attached to any printers, so, you know, I've, I can't do much right now. But if I had one attached, it would show up in this list, and I would just say, yeah, go for it. Pick some settings, and, and there we would have it. But there's a lot of other stuff you can do with this app as well. Um, I'm going to throw this model away because realistically, if I want to emboss my name on it, I can do it anytime I want. Um, but there's a lot of other fun things that you can do. Um, well, this is actually called 3D Builder, right? So let's try to build something. And I, we, you know, Emmett, you did a great job there doing embossing on the, on the Nokia phone stand. So I'm going to try just loading in these primitive objects, if you can see this. Uh, and I'm going to just use these objects to build something. Let's just try building like a little house or something. How about that? So these objects look pretty good for that. Well, so I'm going to actually go back and touch these here just to delete them out. Oh, okay. that's not, I wanted that one there. Actually, I'm going to keep the roof piece too. Let's do a pyramidal roof. Oops, this one there. So I'm going to take my kind of cube here. I'm going to scale this. Um, Hit edit, and actually I can just use your controls, can I, like that? I'm going to take this uh, roof piece, and, oops, I got the wrong one there. Click that guy. I'm going to, oh, I still have him. Now notice this thing says that the objects exceed the printable, the printable area, the print bed. Now you can kind of ignore that for now, but it's an interesting check to show uh, that uh, we are keeping track and doing analysis of the object uh, as we go to make sure that what you're building can actually be printed. Um, now I'm going to go to this move thing here. Let's see if I can move this. Well, it's saying that I've actually maxed out my, my area, so I can't move it until I shrink it a little bit. Let me shrink this down. Go to move and pick that. Oops, oh, I'm, on, I'm not on Z. Ah. Click that. And then zoom up a little bit there. And I'm kind of now moving this thing around and trying to get it in the right place. I'm going to go across to my X, X, and get that on there. Maybe Y, move it a little bit until it's kind of centeredish, and then I'm going to, we're going to expand it out a little bit there to make it kind of look like a, kind of a house. And then I can also take these two pieces. They're right now they're two meshes. I'm going to cl click the two of them together. I'm going to say merge, and I can do a union. Whoops! What happened there? Something didn't quite work right. Let's try that again. I'm going to take my two pieces, merge, and do a union of the two. Now they're one object, and I can move them all around the, the print bed or scale them how I want. Uh, in fact, I, you know, I'm going to do something. Emmett already did the great, the great uh, demo of the contour embossing. Oops, I don't want to do that. That was text. I'm going to do contour embossing. Contour. Click it. Come on. Let's try that again. Emboss. My touch screen is, seems to be not allowing me to pick contour for some reason. 
Let's try that one more time. Contour, okay, I got it. And I'm going to try to find something here just to stick on the side of my house. I'm just going to do a rounded rectangle. And let's just move that thing down in the Z position a little bit. So it's kind of like a little window. And I'm going to um, give it an extrusion. Let's do a negative extrusion. Let's do like negative 12 or so. And I'll apply that. And so you can get a nice little window in the house. And so that shows you a couple of the great features we, we have of being able to actually build from primitive objects something new, using emboss to create a texture uh, or to add surface finishes. And these are really important features of 3D printing because most 3D printers, at least in the consumer level, print in one color, right? So if you want detail, it has to be actually etched into the model itself. In 3D Builder, touch-centric way, very simple. You can actually do some very complicated things that show up in, in, in good detail uh, on, a, on a 3D printer. And it shows you the power of this application uh, really for unlocking your creativity and making it possible for you to express your ideas um, you know, in a way that you can then print out on your, on your printer. So one other thing I wanted to show really quickly was just how to find 3D Builder. And uh, we, we mentioned it was in the Windows 8 App Store, so um, I'm going to actually go into Windows here and go to the store. The way to find this is just to type in 3D Builder. And you'll see it actually pops right up there. You can find it on the web as well. Um, we have a lot of other great products, of course, from Microsoft, but this is the one for doing 3D design. Really think you should try downloading this, and uh, we hope that it is sort of your getting started application for printing on Windows. So that kind of wraps up our 3D printing section. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is 3D model repair, which is actually built into the 3D Builder application, but also available on the website. And we'll go through that in more detail and why that's so important to making your uh, 3D print successful.